We're looking at perimeter and area today. We'll start per with perimeter. We're not going to do much on this because you have done this before. And perimeter is very simple. It's just if you were to land walking around the edge, how far would you walk if you walked all the way around the edge of the shape? Um, and the only thing that we're going to add to this now is because we've done Pythagoras, sometimes they're not going to give us all the information and we've got to work it out. So if we wanted the perimeter of this triangle, we obviously need to say this plus this plus this. We don't know this, but we can work it out using Pythagoras because we're in a 90 degree triangle. So this by Pythagoras is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. That's 9 plus um, 16 square root of 25, which is just going to be equal to 5. So the perimeter here is 3 plus 4 plus 5, which gives us 12. The other new thing we're going to deal with is the perimeter of a circle. The perimeter of a circle is given its own special name. It's called the circumference. Um, and it is just the idea of if I walked all the way around the edge of the circle, how far would I have walked? But obviously in this case, there's no little bits for me to add up. So I need to use a formula and the formula is 2 pi r. What is the r? r is the radius of the circle, i.e. from the center out to the side. And pi, pi is a special number. It's an irrational number, which means it goes on forever and ever without repeating itself after the decimal comma. And we can approximate it by about 3.14. Otherwise, you'll find it actually on your calculator. So say, for example, we were trying to work out this one here, the circumference of this circle, it's going to be 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the radius, which is 3 centimeters. So it's going to be 6 pi. And if I go to my calculator and I punch that in, I'm going to get 18,85 rounded to two decimal places. If we move on to area now, remember area is basically how much sort of surface does this shape take up so you know if you had to paint the whole thing right how much does that take up so if you're looking at the area of a square this is something you've done a lot of you just say um it's this side multiplied by this side so x times x which is x squared and if you have the area of a rectangle it's the length multiplied by the breadth so for example if we had a rectangle that had, was three meters long two meters wide what would its area be it would be three meters times two meters which will be six and the units will be meters squared right squared because you're in using area we're going to see that the area of a triangle is half base times height. And remember, we can just write that as half BH in maths, because if we leave out the sign, we just mean it's a multiplication sign. So half BH, half base times height. The base is the bottom of the triangle, and the height is from the corner that's opposite the base down directly at 90 degrees to the base. In other words, it's how far is it from the very tip top of the triangle down to the base. Now the reason why the area of the triangle is half base times height is because the triangle is basically half of a rectangle. So it's half of a rectangle. And how are we going to be able to see this is we're going to be able to see, look, you've got this triangle here and it's made up of two pieces, the small piece and this bigger piece. If we make another copy of the small piece, we can turn it upside down and fit it together with it here. And if we make a copy of the bigger piece, we can turn it upside down and fit it there, and we'll make a rectangle. Have a look at this. So you can see if I cut it and take those two pieces and put them together, I then make a rectangle. And this rectangle here is made up of two copies of my triangle, right? Because this and this are the same, and this and this are the same. So basically, if you put together these two purple pieces, it would make a triangle. So inside this rectangle, you've got two of the triangles. We know the area of a rectangle is base times height. And so obviously, the area of this triangle must just be half of it, because two of them could fit into that rectangle. So the area of a triangle is half base times height. We're now going to look at finding the area of a triangle. The area of the triangle is half base times height. Um, and so that's very simple. The only thing we need to do is make sure we can find the base and the height. So a base is easy. It's the bottom of the triangle. And the height is just from the top down to the base. 
So in this case, your base will be three, right? And your height comes from that opposite corner down directly to the base at 90. And so in this case, your height is four. So your area of your triangle is going to be half four times three. So your area is six in this case. Now, sometimes they're going to not put the base at the bottom of the page. And you just have to either get used to turning your head or turning your page around. So, for example, if you have a look at this next one over here, it would be tempting to say this is the base, and we could have this as the base. But then we'd know, need to know the height, which is the length from here down to the base. And they haven't given us that information. So we either need to turn our head around or we need to turn our page around. And if we turn our, our head around here, we can see this here as the base, so 8 as the base. And then we have to go to the corner opposite it and come directly down at 90. And yes, we've got that information. This would be the height. So if we made this the base, then in this case, this would be the height. Height has to come from the corner opposite down to the base. So the area here would be half 8 times 15. Half of 8 is 4 and 4 times 15 is 60. Okay, uh, in a case like this one here, again, we'd be tempted to say this is the base because it's at the bottom, but then we'd need to go to the corner opposite and know how long is it directly down from here to the base. We don't have that information, so we can either turn our head around or turn the page around, and we can, for example, choose this thing to be the base. So if we choose this to be the base, we've got to go to the corner opposite the base and come directly down to the base to get the height, and we do have that information, it is 7. And so here we can say that our area will be half 18 times 7, and half of 18 is 9, and 9 sevens are 63, so we've got our area. There's one other funny situation we can have, and that's this one here. If we have this as the base of our triangle, so this 9 is our base, we need to go to the corner opposite and we need to come directly down to where the base is. How high is this point here above this? And actually to measure that, the height sits outside the triangle in this case. Because how far is this above this? And we've got to come down at 90 degrees. If we come down at 90 degrees, we're actually going to be outside the triangle. And that's not an issue. We know that this is 12 meters above where the base is and so our area will be half 9 times 12 and half of 12 is 6 so um, 6 times 9 is 54 so our area here is 54. So just a slightly unusual case where your height is just sits outside the triangle but it's fine. Height is just how high is this corner above the base. Last area we're going to look at is the area of a circle. The area of a circle is given by the formula pi r squared, right? Remember for the circumference we also had pi in that um, for the circle, right? So area is pi r squared, so this makes it very simple. Say for example we've got a um, circle with a radius of 3. So remember radius is from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle. How far is that? So the, if the radius is 3, our area is going to be pi 3 squared, and 3 squared is 9, so it's pi times 9. Now you can then just go to your calculator, which will have the value, a, a button for pi on it, and you can get pi times by 9. You'll get your answer there. It's and we always have to round it off because pi is an irrational number that goes on and on and on. So we're going to round it to two decimal places here. We'll get 28,27. If your calculator doesn't have a value, a button for pi on it, you can always just use an approximate value for pi. Because remember, pi goes on and on and on. You can almost just say, look, pi is about 3,14, right? So you can always substitute that for pi. So 3 comma 1, 4 multiplied by 9 gets you to somewhere around 28 comma 2, 7. The only slight complication they can do with a circle is sometimes instead of giving you the radius, they tell you that 
you've got the diameter of the circle. So say, for example, they tell you that the diameter of a circle is equal to 6 centimeters. So in this case, what they'll be telling you is that all the way, to go all the way across the circle through the center is, this whole thing here is 6 centimeters. What you need to get is the radius, because your formula has radius in it, and the radius is always just half of the diameter. So you would just have to do one extra step to work out the radius before you could get the area.